Hey guys, how's it going? My name is James and I like beers. Today we're going to be making fresh pasta with a bolognese sauce. Hang around, check it out. Let me know what you guys think. All right guys, so we're going to get started on our bolognese sauce for our bolognese pasta. And we're going to get some uh, olive oil warmed up. A little bit of that, about a tablespoon or two. Uh, so we're going to start off with chopping some onions. We want these to be nice and small. We want them to kind of disappear into our sauce. You don't want like big chunks of onion in there. So then we're going to come in and the tip of the knife run it into the onion. And then kind of pinch the whole thing together and just come down. And we're looking for like quarter inch slices. Once you get towards the end, roll it over. We'll just break down the rest of that onion. We're just gonna do one and a half. These are kind of beefy onions. Okay, and then we're gonna start breaking down some shroom. Just cut them in half and then just some slices. Nothing crazy. Shrooms are like little flavor sponges. Yeah. That's kind of like their lot in life. You put shrooms in like something that's sweet, delicious. Put them in something savory, delicious. Are you a texture, is it a texture thing? Yeah. Mm. Some people think they turn out like squishy and rubbery, right? Yeah. Mm. Is that not how it tastes? No, if you cook them right and you chop them like thin enough, they don't really have that. If they're too thick and they're a little too like uh, bulbous for their own good, they will get rubbery. Oh good. delicious. Belching Beaver's uh, Phantom Bride. It's a uh, pretty cool collaboration beer that they did with the Deftones. Ah, you see what I did there? You see what I did? You see that? Awesome beer. Love it. Next we're going to grate in uh, some carrot. Just one small carrot is going to get grated in. These provide like just the right amount of sweetness that you want in the sauce and a little bit of texture, but nothing crazy. Like don't think that you're going to get away with putting in like 40 carrots. All right, next thing we're gonna grate in is way too much garlic, all right? So we're still gonna use the same grater, uh, and we're gonna do like seven cloves of garlic. I know that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. Just trust the magic on this one. I have, I've grated a fingertip once, and it is absolutely terrible. It hurts so bad. It's, and it's not one of those things where it's like, uh, you know like when you get like a paper cut, and you're like, holy crap, like why am I dying? That's what it's like grating your finger off. Oh, that guy's in there. Uh, and then we're just gonna chop some Roma tomatoes, okay? So Roma tomatoes, very straightforward. Give them a quick rinse, uh, and then you just kind of have them, and then in nine pieces they go, or 12, whatever, math is hard. In they go. We're gonna use crushed tomatoes for our sauce base. Uh, these kind of give it a little, little chunk to it. I usually do like five or six. It depends on the size. I mean, sometimes you get some monster Roma tomatoes. These are pretty average. You don't want your, like, your aromatics and stuff you put in first, like the onions, uh, anything that's a root really, onions, garlic, carrot. If you choose to use celery, you don't want any of that stuff to burn. You want it to kind of cook and translucent, but you don't want it to burn. So medium low and then keep kind of moving it around every now and then. Sweet Italian tasty leaf. Just kind of stack it up. A lot of people will take their time and kind of cup it up into a bowl. I don't really think you need to do that. Stack it up, roll it up, get yourself some chiffonade. So roll it up nice and tight. Take your knife, rock it up and down. As thin as you can, the thinner you slice it, the more it's gonna open up the flavor and really kind of present it to the rest of the dish. But you don't wanna cut it like 70 times, like cross cut it across the board because then you're gonna leave all that like oil from the leaves on the board and not in your dish. And then we're gonna take uh, two cans of San Marzano crushed tomatoes. Now it's important that you use San Marzano crushed tomatoes. Add a very certain sweetness uh, two Italian dishes that you really can't get from any other kind of crushed tomato. One whole 28 ounce can in. Get your ass in there. And then like 85% of the second can. And we're gonna save that other 15% for a little bit later. We're gonna give this a stir. We're gonna let it cook down um, for about seven to 10 years. You really, it, like you can't really cook this too long. If it's on medium low, as long as you can let it go. You can even do this the day before and just kind of let it sit. You want to give it about at least like a minimum of like 45 minutes simmer time. Now right now this is still like vegetarian. Uh, we're going to add in a grip of meat and it's important that you do the meat part separate and then mix it together and it'll make sense in a little bit why we do that. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some fennel seed and some oregano. We're going to toast it up real quick and then we're going to grind it up. Uh, you want to let these toast for like a minute or two, medium, medium, medium high. Just let them get warm. You can smell it. Like when they start to do their thing, you can it'll fill the whole room. You'll be like, okay, shit, we're ready. Okay, so we've had these guys getting toasty roasty for about a minute, minute and a half. Uh, you can smell it again as it like starts to fill the room with smell. Smell, starts to fill the room with smell, you idiot. 
Uh, so we're, and we're just gonna make sure that we get 99% of it in there. It's okay if you spill a little, because I did. Uh, and then we're gonna just grind it, okay? So you're just gonna take this big, stupid, heavy rock thing and just grind it. And you're gonna slowly turn it into dust. We have lamb and sausage, and we're gonna go ahead and throw it into a fry pan. We're gonna brown it, uh, and then we're gonna drain it. Get all of that extra fat out of there. When you're browning like cold ground meats in a non-greased uh, stainless steel pan, it's gonna stick super bad. And you're gonna get like all this like uh, deep, dark browning like on the pan, really, really thick in there. Uh, and as we kind of keep browning and keep browning, um, you're gonna see more and more of this stuff kind of hang out on there. And that's okay, we want that. We're gonna let it sit and like get like a good thick layer of crust on there. Uh, and Cause that's that crust, that like browning of it and it gets to that nice crispiness. That's gonna give us a really nice cool flavor. When we dump it into the sauce, uh, all that flavor is gonna go with it. All right, so we've got a nice browning on our meat. Uh, it's, it's very solidly brown. We're gonna go ahead and drain it. Okay, so what we're left in the pan is all these like brown goodies, right? All this stuff that you see in there, that's pure flavor, pure tasty num nums. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep our pan nice and hot. Uh, we're gonna take it to like a medium heat uh, and then we're gonna use the leftover part that we saved from the crushed tomatoes as well as the leftover part of a bottle of wine that me and Cran smashed and we're gonna deglaze the pan. Deglazing again is introducing a liquid into a hot pan that has stuff like crusted onto it and removing that crust so we can introduce it into our sauce. Yeah. Woo! Got a little out there. And you kind of want to take your wooden spoon and just kind of work the bottom of the pan and it's going to pull all of those delicious tasty brown crusties off of there. It's like a nice clean pan. Like everything's been like taken out of that. All that flavor is now in our sauce. Okay, so now that we've deglazed our pan, we've got our red wine in there along with our, our brown goody num nums. We're going to take our uh, seared meat that we have, our brown meat. We're just going to introduce that in. Give it a quick stir and then let that kind of sit and simmer for about an hour, hour and a half. And the one cup of the pasta water is actually gonna go into our sauce. And that's the last thing that we introduce is that one cup. This is what we're working with. Uh, a little topping of fresh chopped parsley. And then some Parmesan right on top of that. A couple of slices of bread. There you have it. Pasta bolognese. I, I really hope you guys learned something about like either A, sauces, or B, browning, or whatever it happens to be. I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, I hope you guys try this out on your own. If you do, hit me up with the hashtag James Likes Beers. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> okay, so this is the, uh, the pasta bolognese. Uh, I really guys, uh, I like beers. Nailed it? Nailed it. Nailed it? Grant, stop eating everything. We gotta eat that. Red wine. You add red wine. Never order anything deconstructed on a menu. That's just laziness. I need this. This is, it's time for this. Take 74. I don't know what that means. I feel like you're cursing at me. I'm like, oh, it's a deconstructed taco. It's like, no, you just didn't feel like putting together my taco, dude. I have to blot. We're gonna do a thing. 